Well, the, uh, There's the, the shots, of course, are so great that we'd like to show them to you again from a slightly different angle. So here is another replay using uh, somewhat different cameras. Look at all the swamp there between the uh, camera and the actual launch pad. But you can still see that, that roll over. Gee, it just climbs on a mountain of flame, doesn't it? And Frank, a ladder of flame. Frank, the surface wind was perfect so that we saw it lift off right from the instant it left the pad. There was no obscured by the smoke at all. And apparently and they didn't have any problem when they got up uh, pretty high either with all the winds that uh, had been causing some concern. There's always something that comes along at the last minute that people find themselves talking about uh, that possibly could interfere. Six minutes and six seconds into the mission now, and Challenger continues on its way across the Atlantic. They are, uh, of course, going to be very busy. They've got uh, a mission to perform yet today, and then the spacewalk and everything else coming up. So this is going to be an exciting five or six days for these uh, astronauts. And Jules Bergman, who's watched them all go, is at uh, Mission Control in uh, Houston at the Johnson Space Center. And we want to call in Jules right now. Jules, I know it wasn't quite as much fun as watching it go from the Cape, but you too must have been thrilled to see it uh, lift off as it did. Indeed I was, Frank. Less than two hours from now, before the end of the first orbit, the astronauts will open the payload bay doors. Then, just before midnight tonight, Eastern Time, they'll release TDRIS, the advanced communication satellite that is a single major goal of this flight. Thursday, the three-and-a-half-hour EVA or spacewalk, proving that man can do useful work in space from the shuttle. Early Saturday, they're due to land at Edwards Air Force Base in California. A flight plan in brief for the sixth shuttle flight. Thank you, Jules. The, uh, do we have just a moment to talk about the, uh, the communication satellite, which is really going to be a very, very important addition? Lynn, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that uh, in I, your closing I comments? I sure can, Frank. I wish it, we should say what that gorgeous picture is that we're looking at right now. Obviously, one of the chase planes or one of the Air, Air Force planes that's up there uh, taking those pictures from space. Uh, the satellite that Jules mentioned is indeed the primary goal of this mission. It's a very advanced communication satellite. It is the heaviest payload yet to go up. When they get up tonight, about 10 hours into the mission, that whole package will be ejected. What you see is the TDRIS, or the satellite, riding on top an upper stage that will give its own burn later on and then send the TDRIS up to what they call geosynchronous orbit, about 22,000 miles high. The purpose of it, when it gets up there then, the satellite will open up and you will see it has these magnificent uh, solar arrays and panels and antennas that will just unfold. Uh, it's been referred to as a satellite ballet opening up in space. And that will ultimately form part of a three satellite network that will provide almost continual voice coverage for our spacecraft in the future. Uh, that means that in the future, when astronauts are up there, we don't have to go through these periods of, of waiting till they pass over ground stations. We'll be able to listen to them and hear them and talk to them and maybe even see them all the time. Yes. That's what Tedris is all about. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Lynn. Gene, what are your thoughts now as you've seen it go again? Well, my thoughts right now is that they're in orbit. They're not quite in orbit safely, but the, uh, those new engines did perform flawlessly. They had main engine cut off. Uh, they have a small engine burn to get them yet in orbit. But uh, it's, it's, it truly is still a challenge, Frank, uh, without an... And now we're going to take a few moments off, and then we'll be back for a few moments. Stay with us. Well, it was breathtaking, but thank God, routine. If that word can ever really be applied to an event that uh, literally shakes the Earth, the communication satellite, as Lynn told us, will be launched tonight. But on Thursday afternoon at approximately 4.30 Eastern Time, we'll come back on the air to bring you the spacewalk by the two mission specialists. They'll be out in the open cargo bay in the openness of space. So we'll broadcast that on Thursday afternoon. And of course, we'll have a complete report on today's launch and all the activities tonight on ABC's World News Tonight. Now for Lynn Scher and Gene Cernan at Cape Canaveral and Jules Bergman in Houston. This is Frank Reynolds in Washington. <laughs> the mission stay with ABC News to follow the flight of Challenger live coverage of today's space shuttle launch has been a special events presentation of ABC News
We now resume our regular program schedule after this from our local stations. ...in control. We're waiting for confirmation on that maneuvering system burn. Everything seems to be going very well on the way into orbit, Tom. Roy, thank you very much. In fact, we have had, while you were describing that for us, the launch of the tracking and relay data system uh, satellite, we did have confirmation of OMS-1. And by now, I think we've lost the signal as they uh, go out over uh, Bermuda. And what will happen in the future as a result of that new satellite up there, we won't lose the signal nearly as often. That's right. We're going to be uh, you know, nearly continuous coverage with Mission Control, and we'll not have to go from site to site, uh, getting only about 20% coverage as we do now. But that means that those controllers down on the ground can bug you guys up in the air off 24 hours. There is some talk about uh, whether that's a all uh, good news or not, some debate. And there is uh, something else that you probably will not be hearing a great deal about on this flight, even though it may occur, and that is motion sickness. We've had some difficulty with motion sickness with the astronauts on past orbiter flights, but this time the astronauts have gotten together and decided that they would rather not talk about it, even though some of them may be affected. I guess that was a, a general conclusion, was it not? At least not to uh, dwell on all the uh, minor details of uh, what problems individuals might have. If there's anything, though, that's significant to the mission that might, might cause any change, however slight, uh, the full details will be uh, released. Mission goes well. It's still a all-male well, We're going to fix that pretty soon. Well, that's right. The next flight, uh, Sally Ride will that's take right. a ride, that's and right. she will be the very first American woman to fly. The Soviets have had two women, I believe, fly in space, or is there only one? No, two. two, two That's women. right. Two women. And uh, we'll catch up with them with uh, Flight 12. And of course, it's been an all-white flight history, too, and uh, NASA will catch up on that uh, with STS uh, eight. Shuttle 8. That's right. And a black astronaut will fly, the first black astronaut to fly in a U.S. space program. One minute left. Well, after about a year and a half uh, delay, Tony, the space shuttle Challenger is finally on its way. We can imagine that NASA's sigh of relief was as loud as the roar of the launch itself. From what we've been able to see and hear as the uh, curtain went up on this country's latest space spectacular, the show so far, the flight so far today, seems to rate a rave review. If all goes well, the Challenger and the astronauts, Whites, Bobco, Musgrave, and Peterson, will commute back to Earth next Saturday landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California. My thanks to astronaut uh, Tony England. I don't think today's modern astronauts would like that comparison. And now, the countdown of today's flight. We have main engine ignition. Four, three, two, one, zero, and liftoff. Liftoff of the Orbiter Challenger and the sixth flight of the space shuttle. The shuttle has cleared the... Seven, tower clear. Challenger's underway, we got a whole cobra. From the hot air balloon of 1783 to a successful launch today of the Orbiter 1 Space Orbiter. Challenge the Challenger. The new orbiter for the National Aeronautics and Space Agency. We'll have complete details on this flight and the future of the commercial business of NASA tonight on the NBC Nightly News. And of course, we'll keep you posted on the progress of the Challenger 1 as it continues to orbit the Earth tonight. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News, the Kennedy Space Center. On behalf of our resident expert, astronaut Gordon Fullerton, thank you for joining us. Further details, as I say, tonight on the NBC Nightly News. Good afternoon from Cape Canaveral.